I'm inspired by a guy called Rick Rubin. He's got a studio called Shangri-La in LA. I went down there, I visited it, and I'm like always trying to take game from everyone. And he kind of created an environment where artists come and they can be like calm in nature and like just write music with no judgment, no bad energy. Um, it's clean, it's all natural. So like, I was like, London's mad, do you know what I'm saying? Energy travels through the walls, people could be going through all sorts and it's in infecting you and you don't even know it. Subconscious mm. energy, I call it, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, cool. This is the next stage, I'm gonna build a studio, have a couple pods on, on the farm, have a couple animals. Um, alpacas, we've got alpacas here. They're, they're, there's a thing called alpaca therapy that um, kind of contributes to healing depression, anxiety and stress. So we have them, you can oh, stroke okay. the animals and stuff okay. like that. Oh, so it's you spending time with that? Yeah, here and then with the animals is like a brand new energy and like okay. that's why I, I, I'm here. And like I feel like I'm now kind of moving into the father mode of a producer yeah, yeah, yeah. where I'm kind of like, okay, come to this environment. Let me have a chat with you. Let's stay here. Let's get a, some food. Let's have a chef here or whatever, catering, whatever you want to do. And let's just write music from an honest perspective with no disturbances. And I feel like this environment, like some of the records I've made here already are crazy. All right, what's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Free Shots Tequila podcast with myself, Marvin Abbey. Who else have we got in the studio? Mr. Exposed. And Taser Black. And we've got a very, very special guest. To be fair, the podcast is coming from a new location today, as you can see. <laughs> a very nice location. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, just let us know your name, brother, and where you're from. Yeah, I'm still Bangles. I'm from London, Forest Gate. I don't even know you're from Gate. Oh, yes, yeah, right? yeah, I'm from Forest Gate. Yeah. E7. Yeah, E7. Come on. So it's local. A lot of legends from Newham, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of legends, another one in the building. But um, let's get straight into it. So we can talk about your background and stuff like that in a moment. But the main thing is the playlist. Yeah, man. Which is like your new body of work. Mm -hmm. I've listened to a couple of tracks. We're going to play some tracks on this as well so people can hear it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a dope project. I'm not even just saying that because you're here. No, I appreciate it. I feel like <laughs> it's... I told the truth, Keith. When we're listening to no, it in no, the no, car as well... Gigs comes in on fire. Yeah, like, yeah. In, <laughs> intro gigs, you're like, yeah, come on. And it kind but, of reminded us, that's what we we're saying in the car, it kind of reminded us of, you know, kind of the old school tapes where you'd have uh -huh. gigs and you have big ride and you have, you know what I mean? Yeah. That feel, so it felt very old school and organic. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's the element I was trying to catch because I haven't worked with gigs properly mm -hmm. since I started in the rap game and that was one of my goals. So when we went in the studio, I was like, yo, this is something I think we need to kind of bring that element into it. Yeah. Like the the, Michael Million days. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, them big grand Michael Million days. Because yeah. then, man, it adds like panache to the track because you, <laughs> what you're thinking, he says it, or if you're not thinking it, you start thinking it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm. I was going to say, so, you know what I mean? The project is 27 tracks, yeah. essentially. You know what I mean? That is a massive project. So, you yeah. know what I mean? Give us a run through of, you know, kind of where you were mentally when you're like, you know what? I'm going to do a big, massive, you know, album with mm -hmm. that many songs because that's Chris Brown level. He saw one of the only other people. You know what I mean? That yeah. drops a project with that many songs. It'd be a young boy. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, um, I dropped bad my single, my debut single, and um, then I dropped to Your Love Him, and in between that I was dropping productions for so many artists. And then I dropped Fashion Week, and it went top ten. And I was like, How long, longer can I continue dropping singles? I need to drop a body of work studying American producers, seeing themselves transi transition into producer artists. Okay. I was like, I, I kind of opened the gate here to be one of the first people to do that. But to secure the legacy, I need to drop a body of work. And everyone was hitting me up around fashion week time, telling me you should drop an album, rare, rare, rare. And artists wanted to get in with me left, right and centre. So I just done swaps mainly on the album and just started working on it. Um, so like when you guys mentioned gigs to kick it off, it's like literally saying that that's where I come from, from road rap. 
Yeah. And then you transition throughout the album to a whole different um, journey, do you know what I'm saying? Of my production, really. I think, I think the album's a testament to you as well to show the links in the industry you have and who you've mm-hmm. worked with and mm-hmm. how people respect what you've done because the mixtape's not light, bro. Like, I'm, yeah. reading the, I'm reading people on the mixtape and I'm like, I'm seeing Chip, I'm seeing Mo Stack, I'm mm-hmm. seeing Gigs, Asco, mm-hmm. Blade, um, Notes, mm-hmm. um, Squeaks. Like, that. That's norm, That's not like a normal album, if that nah. makes sense, in terms of features, nah. in terms of yeah. people on the album. Yeah. That's why I think it's sick because it's actually a playlist. Mm-hmm. If you create your own playlist on Spotify... Yeah, it'll be tuned like that if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess the whole meaning behind it is is like if you everyone's making their playlist right now yeah. on on their um, own personal ones, and if you take one song and add it to yours, then it's a success for me. Do you know what I'm saying? So either you can run through it and have it playing in the background, or you can take some and add it to your personal playlist. And because it's a streaming era that we're living in, yeah, I felt like as a producer, how am I going to conceptually come through? And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to, well, as a producer DJ, I'm going to create this body of work with various genres yeah. that people can consume. Like if they're listening to a Who We Be playlist from um, Spotify or a Agenda playlist from Spotify, where all the tracks are there from the current UK artists. So mm-hmm. that was my take on it. What was the most like unique pairing for you? Um, what, like getting people on the song? Yeah. Um, I was happy to do Asko and Blade. Yeah, that was cold still. Um, obviously, free my brother Asko. I don't know. Yeah, so we did that. And then Blade peppered it. Obviously, Asko peppered it. Uh, Drip Drip is amazing for me. Yeah, Nines. Um, nines, Mastermind. Um, pushing his talent through and showcasing that he can do a legendary hook. And giving him the right vocal chain and bringing that next level of his vocal production out. Mostak, Mist, obviously... That's who I've come through with in that era of yeah, my career yeah. before yeah. the road rap stuff. Um, yeah, like Shake It For Me, Miss Banks, Back Row G, Crane Face. A few still, yeah. I, I think I've got... A, every every track is kind of special, but they all got their own little journeys. <laughs> how, how, long does, how long was a track normal? Like, how do you get a track? Is it, all right, I've got a beat, mm-hmm. I'm going to send it to the people that I believe should be on this track or do you work backwards and maybe tell someone I'm, I'm, I want to work with you and then they choose what beats? Um, to be honest, the, the whole project's from a fan's perspective because I loved the game before anything, before everything that comes with the game. Like, I loved music and for me, it's like, I want to see people on a track that ain't on a track before yeah. together and I want to make that happen. So really... I just like to meet the artists, have them at the house or the studio and just cook something up. And whoever comes in first on the song, I kind of base it on who else I can put on the song. And then I'll just call them up. My thing's more about relationships, spending yeah. time with the artists. A couple of the songs I sent the song off to get um, um, like verses on, but really and truly everything's been in the studio. Um, that's how I work, old school, um, looking at legends like Timberland and Dre and seeing how they worked with the artists in the yeah. studio so I think that's why my music stands out a bit more different because I'm really producing the track do you know what I'm saying because mm. so that's really what it is because I was going to say you know numbers wise when you were putting you know, again we were talking about how kind of large and uh-huh. diverse of an album it, it is did you have any pushback you know where you're like hey I want to have 27 tracks essentially did you have any pushback where people are like mm, I don't know this might be think, too many tracks or no not really because if you look at like some of the albums that have come out from UK rap like DBE they had 29 songs yeah. um, Heady One had 24 on Edna I think um, so the pro- big projects have come out um, and if you look at that like, back in the day like um, compilation CDs from like the DJs yeah and they had they like had loads of songs tracks, yeah. Yeah. yeah so for me I thought that like, 27 was cool but really it's like two skits an intro or outro so it's like 23 songs yeah really. um, or 22 with a bit of mix up in, in between musically but yeah i um, I don't really try, because it's my project, I'll try not to take an artist's opinion on what I'm trying to do with my art. Okay. If it's the flip side of things and I'm producing for them, then I will absolutely 
dedicate myself to their vision for the song and just help out where I can. But with the playlist, it was kind of more like what I kind of saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, I mean, did, did the idea for the playlist come before you started making some of these tracks or did it come midway through when you're thinking, hold on, mm. I can make a playlist, you know? Mm -hmm. Let me... I've got maybe five or six tunes that I've done as singles. Yeah. Because I know, I remember hearing Blama Blama. Is it Blama Blama? Yeah, Blama was Quite, that last like, year. a while away. Yeah. Like, like, I remember the feature because Tion at that time was, mm -hmm, he, just, like, he was a man. Like, he, he just kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was even saying that to Keith in the car. Yeah. That's when I remember Body like mm -hmm. blowing. So Tion was the guy. Mm -hmm. And obviously Morrison mm -hmm. was kind of coming back through as well. Yeah, he do drop shots and all that. Yeah, so, yeah. so now that you've got this, was it a case of, what point did you say to yourself, do you know what, I'm going to make the playlist and add all these songs together or was it always a vision you had to make an album? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the the, the producer brand, um, Steel Bangles, obviously, has been around for such a long time. To convert it and make it sustainable and cement myself as one of the leaders in the game of production yeah. and becoming a producer artist first, I knew I had to drop the body of work. But I, as I said, it came around about Fashion Week and when I did 47, the Asian song, with Mist and Steph around that time, so late 2019. Yeah. And then COVID happened, and then obviously because I'm independent, I didn't want to drop the, the the album because I can't tour, and I make most of my money from touring. Obviously, I make money from music, getting record deals, publishing deals, but right now I'm independent. Yeah. So that was all self-funded. Everything you see with this, the playlist is self-funded, like everything I did off my own back. Oh. So I was like, had to hold out because COVID was crazy. And then I was like, no, nah, let me wait. And then that's why I dropped it. So really the project was ready for about 2020. Oh, oh right. So I'm like most probably uh, into my second album already. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so like. Oh, that's way, that's a while back still. Yeah. yeah. It's refreshing though, because yeah. even when I heard Asco, obviously Asco's mm. inside or whatever. That was 2019, that song. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So I was thinking, like, yeah, when did you get that verse? Bro, because <laughs> when I heard the voice, I was thinking, what is this? This ain't chat GPT. <laughs> that's AI. That, AI for Asco, I said, no. <laughs> Obviously, it's a flip on Balling by Jim Jones. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. I remember We Fly High. You know, no, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit of that kind of inspired. So did, That's mad. Just, 2019, you know? Yeah, yeah. So did you have a, again, you know what I mean, since it's, like I said, it's 2019 that you've done some of these tracks, mm -hmm. did you have a fear of it might, you, did you kind of fear that it might be a little dated when it comes out? No, do you think the sound I, changes? I think great music's like wine, isn't it? Ages in mm. time. Like most of my songs, and a lot of musicians will know this, and, um, and artists and producers, like we make music ahead of time. You know yeah, I like, find that very interesting yeah. because people say, for example, that Back Row G is sitting on a lot of ca uh, catalogue that he's basically mm -hmm. chipping it around in it. Yeah. So by the time it eventually comes out, mm -hmm. technically this, it's like three, four years old. Mm -hmm. But it's still going to sound like a new album to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might differentiate a couple of artists' voices that might have grown. Like, do mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, might yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's got an older his voice. Yeah, but or like. Most powerful cool things, but really, it's more to do. I with think the we had the conversation so. about H and the car, where you like it sounds a little different now. To yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I guess that is that is time is is a, a big factor when you're a producer and you don't rap on anything like that and trying to get all these artists and filter through records. It takes time, mm. and whatever's happening with the artist is like cool. What? You just work with it, but you still know it's the artist, if you know what I'm saying. So with an album like this, how many tracks did it make it? Mm, I've got a few records still, most probably like 12. Okay. And obviously there's a lot of artists that are not on the album that I work with, that I've held back. Because mm. I felt like this is an introductory one, since I went independent and I'm distributed by ADA on Warner. So... Yeah, I just kind of wanted to hold my body of work, but at this stage, I'm just about ownership. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So Playlist 2's, mm. it's there, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. I mean, I'm, I might not call it the Playlist 2, I might call it something else. You could you could but, do that, because remember, everyone... Yeah, it's conceptually yeah, tied I think in that, with my tours. Yeah. Well. My tours are going to be really theatrical, like, okay. on stage, you're going to see crazy stuff, like... It's not going to be normal. Like the fans are going to be engaged, crazy. Like my my live show for this is 
Yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be mad. I can imagine, bro, because it's, it's just so many different. I'm getting a ticket still. Yeah, hundred percent. Nah, you like coming free, man. Nah, come on. Nah, nah, nah. I, I, listen, I, I don't really want to push the angle still, but you get me. Hundred percent, man. So I'm saying I'm announcing the tour on Friday. Dope, man. So, you know, do you know what's dope as well? So to cut you, I feel like in terms of the UK and in terms of music, there's certain producers or directors that you know their name mm-hmm. or you're familiar with their work. And I feel like in terms of the UK, you're one of those people that, no, that, that, that the name that. Still Bangles is like, like you've got Still Bangles, you've got J5. Yeah, man. What's so my, that, so that, that uh, my man that works with, that done um, Burn, is it with Kids Tune or? Tommy, Tommy's Bridgerin. PTJ. Yeah, PTJ. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, There's certain yeah. names that like, and yeah. I feel like you're in, you're up there in terms mm-hmm. of that name. And when mm-hmm. you hear Still Bangles, you know already what you do, mm-hmm. the criteria is there. Where did the yeah. name come from? Still bangles when I was in jail. Um, one of my boys, Anarchy, is from Jamaica. So when I was in prison, I was 17. Uh, and, and then he got he was getting deported. So he kept calling me bangles because of this. But I had a bigger one, a okay. thicker one. Yeah. And he always used to call me bangles, but it's made out of steel. But it's also to do with the fact that I'm a Sikh. Okay. And this symbolises, like, to remember who man is and where man's from and what like my religion team. and my culture represents. Oh, and also, like, not to really engage in too much, always remind yourself before doing or touching anything in a negative way. So it was deep, but it's also to my, my brother Anarchy's in Jamaica. So big him up. That's why I kept the name. Oh, it's dope still. Yeah. It's, it's the funny thing about Caribbeans, yeah, when they give you a nickname, it is very... It's literal, literal bro. Yeah, yeah, it's literal. <laughs> Bangles. If you got if you got like a bent foot, they'll Bang, call you bent, bent, bent foot. foot. There's bro, no, there's no bent. Or foot, uh, foot bent boy, come here. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they used to call me Mugabe, bro, because I'm from Zimbabwe, and I was like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> you call him Mugabe. There was another guy from the barbershop as well. Um, he was, I think, where was he from? He was Pakistani, he's half Pakistani, half Jamaican. They used to call him Zadar, and I was like, he's not even from there, bro. Like, where is that from? But, you know, once they give you the nickname, that is it, bro. It you know what I mean? It sticks. They will never, ever, ever call you by your name. But it sounds sick, though. Yeah, man. Still yeah. Angles. Yeah, I was just stuck with it. You get me? It's actually a dull name, actually, so... Yeah, when you think of the birth of a name and, you know, when a name sticks with you and getting a sick name is one of those wavy things because you get a name mm. and it sticks. Because there's certain man, you know, when, when you... Especially in America now, I think they just pick their names out of a bag, bro. Because yeah, when you hear some of these names, bro, you're like... Where? America's is little this, little that, little that. And once, mm. once there's a wave in America... Well, little grenades, little, but little, anything. Little, 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 or it will just be... Like, it's like when we were coming up and everyone was, everyone was like, I'm MC this and I'm MC yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Or younger this, kind of this or younger that. Yeah. So. And it's crazy because over there, you know what I mean, we could literally will sit there and say, oh, these men have these crazy names, but these men will come out there and drop one tune and man's like, yeah, it's made 40 million. They'll be like, oh, one yeah, track. Yeah, That's yeah. the one track they will have that they will do that tune for the next 15 years. Yeah, America, but America's massive though. Is, is that something that you're thinking of doing as well in terms of like the American market? Have you got your eyes over there, like to say? Yeah, 100%. Like, I've been out there a lot. Um, I was recently with Jay Prince in okay. Houston. Um, I've been on the Drake and Future Tour in 2016. I oh, was um, on, on, across most of the, the dates. And I just kind of was hustling out there. LA, I've been Miami. Like, I've driven all over America. Atlanta, mm. I've been. Yeah. Um, really good friends with Scooter Braun, who manages Justin Bieber. I'm known very well. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of want to do that, but it's important for me to stick to UK music because I feel like we're the next big thing globally and it's coming and it's coming and it's growing. And my job as a producer is to stick to to my thing. And then when I'm needed in America, I'll go mm-hmm. and uh, assist in the sound creation of what they want. But until UK music is popping worldwide, like Afrobeats is today, or like UK drill sound crossed, mm-hmm. You get me. I feel, I feel like with Pot Smoke, they had that for a, for a point in time with the yeah. New, New York, like Flavio, um, um, Pot Smoke, and there was a point in time where like mm-hmm. they wanted that drilly well, that UK. Flavio, Flavio uh, sorry. Uh, funny enough, like it's crazy. God bless Pop Smoke. I did the last session with Pop Smoke. Oh, serious? Before he flew to LA. No one knows that story, but um, I'm a partner at Tape Nightclub. I've been there for four or five years. Um, we designed the studio in there with um, Hef and Zeus. And yeah, the last session before he flew out to LA was with Pop Smoke. Oh, like with me and Pop Smoke and the Elements. 
which is crazy. Oh, sick. What could you say is, I guess, um, the biggest differences in working, I guess, with US artists as opposed to UK artists? I mean, in that session, um, Pop Smoke was very adamant about a certain microphone and a certain compressor. And he knows how he wanted his voice to sound. And he wouldn't record on the microphone we had. We had a, a telefunken in there, but he's like, I'm not doing it. So he's got his own. So my partner, Hef, had to go and get everything um, in there because he, he knows. And I've noticed that with a lot of Americans and also the way they vocal their songs. Majority of them will say a line or two, stop the rap, um, and then kick in again. Whereas UK rappers try to do, do the rap. whole 16. Yeah. But that's why American music sounds so clean. You know what I'm saying in terms of delivery. I've seen it with Future. Like I was in, I was at the Atlanta show. I've seen him come in and he does it line by line. French Montana. I've been in the studio with him. I've seen him do it line by line. Um, Giggs has got that technique. That's why it's so clean. Like when you hear Giggs's delivery, it's like everything you, he says is so. That's how you know he's like the Don in it because he, it's just there. Like Chip does the same thing. When you say line by line, so for example, it's like so the first line of the rap. So, so I come into the studio, I'm like, all right, so I've got four bars. Mm -hmm. I do one line. Stop. Stop. I make sure luck. that's clear. Yeah, you deliver it a few times and then you come in again oh, on, right. on top for the next line. You say some of the words beforehand. Oh, okay, okay. So we keep your tone and then we just chop you in. But the listener doesn't know. Yeah. But that's how, why American music, especially Drake does the same thing. Um, you know, <laughs> at times I've seen Burner Boy do it, um, especially... Um, but yeah, that technique and um, what I'd say to UK rappers is like, yeah, we're getting money and everything, but invest in your vocal chain. That's what I've learned from Americans. Like the Sony C800G is a microphone, it's discontinued now, but it's about 12 grand. Do you know what I'm saying? So, but man, I'm out here doing 50 bags on watches. But they um, get the right or, or but the mics too bills. But the mic's 10 bags, but it, it, it makes it's a 12, it, uh, 12, sorry. No, I'm um, saying no, as in the mic's that they're using it. Yeah, 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 the mic's that they're using is yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and obviously the producer that's that's coming up or whatever, like this is all a, a, a big thing, isn't it? Like in terms of financially trying to do it. So I think we still got a long way to go in terms of looking at how we're going to improve our quality as UK music. Do you get it? Yeah. That's mad still. Uh, do you know yeah. what it is? I've learned, to, I, I like interviews or I like conversations where I learn stuff. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, the way I saw it is that the dude goes into the booth, lays the, whole verse. Lays the verse down. Depends if he, if he on makes the artist. If he makes a mistake, mm -hmm. he might Kick do it him. again. Or if the energy's not there, you might mm -hmm. say, no, 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 do that again. But I didn't nah. know that there's some people that do line by Yo, line. every American artist that I've bucked or whatever, they've all done it like that. That's it's like the story. Sorry, to cut you off. Today. It's like even the story from of, Nigeria, uh, like Rema, when I was in the studio with him, same thing, line by line, mm, or like two lines or something. But it makes sense though. Yeah. We do, if we do reads for, um, but he's so yeah. clean with it. When we do reads for like um, stuff, for ads, you do that like, sometimes like when, when you when you try and do it in a long chunk, it's long. It sounds you, like a mouthful. Your breathing's yeah. a bit off and whatever. Whereas if you just do bit by line bit. by line or bit by bit, mm. it sounds clearer. So I get what you mean, but you wouldn't yeah. think about that music wise. Yeah. I just think about it as reading, but. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, going back to the what you said originally, do I want to be big in America or go over there? Yeah, I do, but if I'm big in my country, then I've got my own collateral. Yeah, yeah. Do you get me? And I don't need to go on, I can just Give me your car, stand on my own team. feet. And then I'm like, well, we, this is what we do and we should do what, something here. But when I was speaking to Jay Prince, um, we were talking about um, uh, making an album called Bridging the Gap where it will be UK artists and American artists, and obviously Prince is plugged in differently. So, so what two artists can you see working together, US I mean, and UK, I, I, if you I, had to do A that. lot of collabs I see um, with UK artists and Americans, sometimes I wish they'd come to me, because I haven't seen one that's really banged off crazy, unless it's like a Steph London and French Montana, like hurting. That was a chill. Um, yeah, that's a big one still. Do you know what I'm saying? Or if it's like, uh, Afrobeat artist and a UK artist but American ones I haven't really seen that many and I feel like okay. with my experience I could kind of get a better record than that not to say that they're not good I just yeah. feel like I, I'm, I'm just so passionate about the game that I just wish they come to me a bit mm. um, it's, it's mad though because off the top of my head I can't think of that many the only ones I can think of is as you said Steph. oh and Praise the Lord by Skepta and Asia. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. that's why because that's because Skepta's a goat 
and he's been in the game for so long that he, he, he he's a producer yeah. as well and he knows what he wanted and he and he made that blend and you can see that with me now I've proven it um, with two different languages I had Burna Boy and Sidhu on a song yeah, we'll talk to and, you and, and and you know I've I've shown that I can get two artists even if it's a different language and still make it harmonious you know what I'm saying I think it's dope what you said in terms of because when you think of you get artists only ones I can think of that bridge the gap as you said Skepta ASAP um, Steph and um, French, French yeah. and I think Chip done it years ago when yeah. he had like Chris Brown and Champion bang on and, yeah and people forget with, um, Estelle and Kanye oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. old yeah. school but then, but then think about it as I still was saying yeah look at the timing between those collabs Estelle and Kanye years mm, yeah. Chris Brown and Chipmunk years ago then obviously then what Nice French, French Montana and then Skepton. I think people lose mean? the art. Um, it's important when you get in the studio with, with an American artist as a UK artist to... Hold your own in it. Yeah, really mm. don't get like don't get too excited because you're the man's on a song that's going to bang off. Mm. You know we've had that mentality from time. Yeah. Mm. That's not it, man. Produce the song, man. Go go again. Don't be afraid to say, no, do you know what? This one didn't work. Can we go again? I think the UK and America's changed though because I thought that a long time ago that American coastline was like, that's what we were waiting for. Whereas now, I feel like in the UK, mm -hmm. there's a lot of men that, they're like, man, no, we're doing our thing over here. Like, you can, I, you can I see personally feel thing. like UK music's better than American music right now. Like, personally, that's me. And that's not just because I'm from the UK. Um, the reason why I say that is I can relate to it more lyrically. Yeah. It's closer to home. Whereas when we related to American music, it was more like, where they started dressing like them a bit. Yeah. To feel it a bit more with the new era hat or them big jackets or the, you know what I'm saying. Mm. Whereas now we kind of got our own identity, which is, I I love that. And it helps now because I feel like when UK artists used to do songs with US artists, mm. they tend to lean into whoever the artist is. This, so you know what I mean. It would be UK artists yeah, on an American beat now, where you feel like they're not comfortable on it. Mm -hmm. But you know, and you're like, you guys wanted the feature, yeah. so now you kind of have to cater to that artist. Whereas now, you know, what I mean, we're doing our thing and you're on our track as opposed mm -hmm. to you know what I mean we're on your track essentially yeah. to cater to you so you think that's something that's kind of changed quite a bit with yeah. us getting I guess our own identity in the UK mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I, 100% um, I think it's because of the internet so like when we're talking about the um, American stuff from back in the day like the internet weren't as or social media weren't as about as it is today like I'll compose a banger now and it can reach the whole world if choose to, if it chooses to, you know what I'm saying. But yeah. I think the internet has played a big part in like in that as well. Do you know what I mean? Um, and people like like Drake co-sign in England. And when I went over to Toronto, um, I really felt at home there, and I kind of understood that there was a medium there between the UK and America. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, uh, them guys really love our stuff. So it was like it's just a journey. America, Canada, and now it's UK next, and I know it's going to be one of the biggest things globally and we'll have a, like 10, 12 artists from here that are just mashing up the world and it's going to come, I believe, anyway. No, 100%. And I think with, especially with artists, like, it's a conversation I had with Ferg where we were talking to some, a friend of mine in America and he, he really loves, you know what I mean, the UK sound and he's one of those people mm -hmm. that loves introducing the UK sound mm -hmm. to other Americans. Mm -hmm. Even if you go on his YouTube, mm -hmm. you find him just playing them different songs. Mm -hmm. And we had a, we had a conversation a while ago about, you know, artists breaking, you know, UK artists breaking in the US, essentially. And we were kind of discussing why it wasn't happening, essentially. And he mm -hmm. was like, for a lot of them, they just didn't understand a lot our lingo and how we were. And that's why when I think... And they weren't willing to. Yeah. They, what they, I've they, noticed they, about yeah. America was like, when I went there, it was like, they were very like nothing else in the world exists yeah, but America 100%, 100%. and it's the best and it's everything's <laughs> nang and it's like yeah man but it's but, like but I think that's the mentality over there as you said like, it's, it's, yeah they're very patriotic America's the greatest and when you look at entertainment in general that's kind of like the mecca of entertainment Hollywood mm. um, hip hop whatever so it kind of in their mind they're like we don't need to look at anyone else you've got to look at us w what's great about us is um, we're in the middle of the world I'd say and we had so many different ethnic minorities that we grew up with from school days. And Africa has played a big part in that. Asian music has played a big part in that. Um, Ghana Ghanaians, yep. West Nigerians, Indians, yeah, West yeah. Indians, Jamaicans. I feel like we had a different masala, mate. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whereas when, when I'm in America, it's really like you're either black American, Afro-American, 
or you're like white American. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's not as because it's such a big country. It's like it's segregated as well. Isn't it? Yeah, the bonding ain't as quick yeah. as England. England yeah. is like we're just Cause, all cause our, a mix up. Because our music does that here. Yeah. Whereas in Amer- in America you've got and we're close to Africa, so that's why it's so yeah. big. Yeah, yeah, because because well. you got Bad Bunny, for example, and he's he's doing his thing over there. But yeah. black, well, I'm not saying black people ain't, but we're not really listening to that. No. But then you might have like a a Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. They're listening. Like, we're not listening to that. It's kind of like there's pockets. Like Beyonce might blur over some. Whereas as you said here, mm-hmm. because everyone's so used to like hearing music all the time. Mm-hmm. Stormzy will, will be here, this person will be there, do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I do get what you mean. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, we were speaking about it before, so how did the collab with uh, Burner Boy and um, Siddy come about? Um, yeah, basically, um, while Siddy was alive, God bless him, uh, we made that song. Yeah. Uh, the, the song's meaning is, my name lives forever. So he's kind of like uh, prophesizing his death um, before he even passed away and we sent the record to Burner and then he vocaled the record in LA um, but it wasn't finished so I flew to St. Mark oh let me just start again no it's coming come. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I flew I flew to St. Martin's in the Caribbean um, obviously Burner's a massive worldwide star now so I had to go and finish the record there I just pulled up with my studio and then the ending of the song was dedicated to Sidhu. So, yeah. Portable studio, like Tony Stark, you know. Just put it in my suitcase and went, mate. <laughs> it's crazy, because when I found out about um, Sidhu, essentially, it was from my boy Nick, because they were friends as well, but I had no idea how big... Oh, uh, massive. Of, like, at the time, you know, it was yeah, a couple of years back as well, because I think they, they filmed some videos. They were filming some videos at his house. And, you know, yeah, the car, he's got the cars, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, literally, because they had the video, and I think they had his... It was a, in the dawn. So yeah, it's called, I think dawn. it's the GOAT video. Yeah, that's the one. So, when they did that at the time, because I had no idea who he was at the time. So, literally, you know, you click a link, and at the time, I was like, yo, you know, when you look at the views mm. on an artist, and it also kind of shows you how big the world is because when you look at an artist you can find an artist you've never heard of and you're like that's 400 million views yeah, on yeah, a video yeah. and you're like and it kind of gives you context of yeah. you know especially when you kind of look at um, I'd say different parts of the world essentially yeah. you know what I mean when you look at you know the Asian side of the world essentially you know where you're like it's self-sustaining so when you're talking about Bad Bunny where yeah. he can exist in one pocket and, you never, and, be, and you've never heard and of we him will though. never hear it and oh, it will still yeah. be clocking 200, 300, Bro, 400 it's sheer population man you know what I mean and it's just insane so what was it like for you bringing two artists like that together? Because, you know, that's it's, it's, two goats. It's mad. It's, it's like, for me, I think it was great for the culture. Growing up in London, um, my best friends were Ghanaian, Nigerian, Jamaican, Turkish, um, British, like English. And like, I've always had that love for them. So like, for me to bring someone from my culture and someone from Nigeria together, yeah, I felt like it was a... To be, yeah, I guess, I that's to, hard, to be the saying? person that brings it yeah. together. Essentially. Yeah, you know, what? in the moment, you're never thinking about yeah. it. Like it, it, in this game, you kind of never get a chance to really digest everything you're doing, and, and there's so much that goes into it when you're on uh, on that stage. But it's, it's like a Khaled vibe. You know, what Khaled will bring yeah. a Justin Bieber yeah, and Drake together on a yeah. tune, and you're 100%. like, yo, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So. And I feel like that's what you were doing on a project like this, where you can say, you yeah. know what I mean, on a Khaled level, you're like, yo, I can call up X, Y, Z, yeah. get this person on a project. So what does that feel like knowing that, you know, if I need to put together a project, you know, I, I've mm. built so many good relationships that yeah. I can just, you know, make a call and get X, Y, Z. Because mm. a lot of people, bro, they couldn't get, you know what I mean, a fraction of those people on one album, on 10 albums, let alone mm. just one I, album altogether. I feel like it's the, the respect of my art and yeah. the relationship that I have with the artist. And um, you know, them trusting uh, me with their with their art, I guess. But I think I think you're think, oh, sorry, cut yeah, you no, no, you're good. I feel like you're thinking out of the box as well, which is dope. Because I feel like a lot of people tend to just think, let me get UK artists together, or mm-hmm. let me get this. Whereas you're thinking, I'm gonna get two different mm-hmm. cultures together, two different artists that people would never expect to come together, yeah. and it works. So remember, sometimes you can bring, you know, like even in football, you can. You can buy a six striker for a team, but it might not fit your formation. Mm-hmm. So you as a producer, like people think it's easy to get two big artists and it oh, works. Ah, it's not. It's it's not, not I'm saying, not, for, for you to make crazy. it work is a testament to you as a producer as well as 
the thought process and those two artists. Can you also touch on how important relationships are? They're, they're literally your... your um, Bread and butter. Yeah, yeah like it's, it's your backbone. Like, I've watched and studied so many producer-artist relationships in the past that I knew if I was going to succeed, I need to be more than just sending beats or just having, like quick studio sessions. I really need to live with that person, feel that person, get to know that person, yeah. know what they're into, and really then craft a sound. Um, so uh, it's, the, it's the most important thing. Otherwise, you'll just be like a beat maker who gets a couple placements and Definitely. no one really really respecting to come to you and work with you um, on that level, on they a just personal level. Beats. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like that's not enough. When you, you mentioned earlier that this is one of the, that's one of the reasons why you got this space here. Yeah, yeah, the the retreat I call it. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, obviously I've been in the game a long time, and everything was moving fast. I was consuming a lot of alcohol. I was around a lot of just shows after show after session after session, moving like a madman. And yeah, it got to a point where my team were like, "Boy, you better go to rehab in it." Because right now you're moving mad. <laughs> was, it, was there a particular reason for that rehab? Was it? Um, no, I was. I, the alcohol was um, like I was very deluded. Okay. Um, I was very like unsure where I was, <laughs> kind of thing. Because um, like you can't avoid alcohol. Like in this game, every studio session, every show that I DJ at, like literally, you know, from 2017 to two end of. 2019 I've literally done like 400 shows and on my rider is two Sorocs two Henny two Sorocs two Henny and then I get more and I'm just getting blasted and you don't think about it like and you're just getting mash up and then I've got to go and do the same song the same thing in a different city and I'm just like oh, not again like kind of like yeah. alcohol kind of was like just That's boosting not, me to yeah, go through yeah, but yeah. then Covid happened and I was still liquoring but it was a bad time if not like mentally it was a bad time for everyone yeah, yeah. yeah. so by then I had abused my liver in it. So when now I'm sitting and drinking alcohol and nothing's going on. Yeah. So then it's shifted the, to the way I'm thinking. So it was kind so of was having the, an impact. So what was the light bulb moment? Like, no, this is a change. Yeah, I was like, yo, I ain't going rehab. Forget all that. And then I started looking for houses. Started looking in Kent. I come here. I was like, I know what I need to do now. I need to get to the next stage. And I was noticing that a lot of artists were like, when they would call me, they were a bit down as well and depressed or whatever. And then I'm inspired by a guy called Rick Rubin. He's got a studio called Shangri-La in LA. I went down there, I visited it. And I'm like always trying to take game from everyone. And he kind of created an environment where artists come and they can be like calm in nature and like just write music with no judgment, no bad energy. Um, it's clean, it's all natural. So like, I was like, London's mad. Do you know what I'm saying? Energy travels through the walls. People could be going through all sorts and it's in infecting you and you don't even know it. Subconscious mm. energy, I call it, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, cool. This is the next stage. I'm gonna build a studio, have a couple pods on, on the farm, I have a couple animals. Um, alpacas, we've got alpacas here. They're, they're, there's a thing called alpaca therapy that um, kind of contributes to healing depression, anxiety and stress. So we have them, you can oh, stroke okay. the animals and stuff okay. like that. Oh, so it's a you spending time with that? Yeah, here and then with the animals is like a brand new energy and like okay. that's why I, I, I'm here. And like I feel like I'm now kind of moving into the father mode of a producer yeah, yeah, yeah. where I'm kind of like, okay, come to this environment. Let me have a chat with you. Let's stay here. Let's get a, some food. Let's have a chef here or whatever, catering, whatever you want to do. And let's just write music from an honest perspective with no disturbances. And I feel yeah, like this God. environment, like some of the records I've made here already are crazy. Like, yeah. you know, so that's why I'm here. And I called it the retreat because me being an artist and a creative person, do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's, you know, you live such a fast paced life. Everything's really loud. Yeah. You know, I guess this is that place you come to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Where you kind of take a step back. Or sometimes feel like taking a step back from real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Where, or maybe take, you take a step into your real life. Because, you know, sometimes you go out there, you're around all the glitz, the glamour, the mm -hmm. lights, you know what I mean? And sometimes it can, like you said, it can get confusing. You can get delusional, essentially, where yeah. you lose sight of reality. And then yeah. you take a step back, you come home, spend time with... Um, your animals essentially and we were having a conversation yeah, I just walk barefoot in the grass love alpacas I, I just installed a swing over there I'm just doing that section up 
up okay. over there. I just got a swing where a man can chill. And I've, just I've heard about that. Have you heard about that? Swinging. No. Oh, swing therapy. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a swing. No, no, just checking what you mean. How long did it take? <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take? Ten what? Ten this, this, this episode has been so clean. I don't remember that episode so clean. A man brought swinging in. Mad thing. Yeah. No, 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 no. What's wrong with what are you saying? Man? I'm too serious for you, lad. No, 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 no. It's cool. <laughs> but, um, do, do, do you know what it is? Because I've heard there's a thing called grounding or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, called earthing. Uh, off earthing. So yeah, any, yeah. Anytime, like, Natural you cleanser. Anywhere, like, even That's if, why you lot love the sand and barefoot. Yeah. But the, 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 the grass is even more connected to the earth. But I heard even if you go to like another country like LA or whatever, mm-hmm. you've got a, different, a time difference. Yeah. If you um, ground earth yourself, apparently it's supposed to help you acclimatise to like the time difference. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Reset your body because it's the, the earth. Have you tried it? Sleeping, no? sleeping helps with that as well. Try it, man. I'm try it. The <laughs> try it. I'm changing the narrative on, yeah. on the podcast right now. You're going to say, well, just walking around Atlanta Let's barefoot. Camp. Listen, if you, if you don't see me in, in, in Romford with my bare feet on the grass, <laughs> Don't send no pictures of Shade, bro. I say I've lost it, bro. If you're walking around, I, I'm earthing, bro. I'm if you're grounding. walking around Romford barefoot, bro, you are no, taking that, it to the wrong kind of energy. That's stone, bro. That, I'm talking about grass, boy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's dope, though. I thought you meant the high Yeah, man. I think it's because I'm getting older. Do you meditate and stuff like that? Yeah, I meditate here and there. I pray every night. Okay. I have to. It's standard. Try and do it in the mornings, but I'm just, I think I'm just realizing that certain positions I was in. I've been blessed to progress forward. Yeah. And that's where I'm at now with it. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Like, I need my next artist. I need to do what Dre did and find his Eminem, find his 50 and find that and create that, that, that legacy, label. That, and that, that, yeah, that that's my next awesome. tick box. Albums done, singles are done. Next thing is making one of the biggest artists from this country. And Have you seen any new artists? That that you wait, wait a second, tell you, before we move on. Let it be known that there's discrimination on this podcast because the way you lot pause me and you cook me for these things, yeah, yeah. is discrimination because you lot let letting bangles get away with this stuff. We will discuss this. What HR. What's, what you know you mean, there's with? too many. What I'll, we'll discuss say? it later. What? There's too many that you lot keep letting what? slide. But if it was me now, I'd be getting cooked. No, speak up. Like, what, what did I say? Bangles one of the bad days. Speak up. Yeah, man's talking about all these positions now, but if it was me now. Oh, oh, see, see. Oh, no, so if I said certain things, you say, hey, yo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, oh, positions, me, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. discrimination. No, no, oh, no. Hey. Don't no, before, because before you change that taste, because we were talking about um, the drinking, you know what I mean? I wanted to kind of touch into that, because, you know what I mean? You've. You've not gone to rehab. You've come. No, nah, self healing. Self healing yeah, is what I call it. I've been through this this stage bare times before, yeah. whether it wasn't if it was with alcohol or if it was like things weren't going right with my career and I've tried so hard. Or so I kind of thought. Let me just stuff. battle this one out. So what's your relationship with alcohol like now? You know what? It doesn't even bother me. You know, like I'm nearly six months sober. Oh, dope. Yeah, I'm past that. Um, I got this app on my phone, kind of like. Just a community of people, and um, yeah, I just, I just know if I, if I just knew if I didn't stop, then when I stopped, my team would have been washed, or I could have messed up a lot of things. How important is the friends that you keep around you as well? Yeah, hundred percent. Like everyone you see here, I've known from from day one. Like in that sense, um, I'm grateful to have friends that I grew up with on my estate. Um, like the man that you saw earlier, yeah. me and E was in jail together from when I was 17 and we've been friends till now. Um, and yeah, like kind of like that's, I'm just blessed for that, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, when you, when you wake up and you're like, I'm getting an alpaca, that's definitely, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? You, you're definitely a different place in yeah. life, you know what I mean? Cause you're yeah. like, if you think about it, it's one of those animals that most people never ever yeah, they always say it's a llama. I'm like, it's not a llama. It's a, it's a alpaca. Respect bro, my alpaca. You know why bro? this conversation is... Alpaca. Bro, no, you know why this conversation is bloody hilarious? Because we were talking about earlier, like, the logo for my, my business has an alpaca on it. And we always used to have this conversation with people like, it's, oh, it's a llama. I'm like, no, oh, it's, it's an alpaca. And people like, they're the same thing. I was like, Camel no, family. they're not the same it's, thing. It's, it's, not, it's the same family, thing. though, no. It is, but it's not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. that's and like saying spit. a staff or a bulldog or something. Yeah. You're like, they're both dogs. Yes, but they're different dogs. They're different, Llamas spit. Yeah, llamas they, can be horrible. very aggressive. Yeah, they're horrible. Llamas can be very, very aggressive animals, essentially. Alpacas are, you know what I mean, much nicer versions of those animals. But yeah, as we were saying, it's just one of those things where I guess you've definitely ascended into a, a different place, essentially, where you can come home and say, I'm going to go hang out with my alpacas. And that's to mature up, you know. Yeah. When that's to mature up, it's important to realise as life progresses that you kind of need to, 
grow up a bit. Yeah. How do you feel that's it? The music game music? keeps you young, innit? Yeah. But how do you feel that's impacted your music? You uh, know, it's you amazing, man. It's amazing. Like I feel like the best music of my life is about to come. And it's and it's and it's happening. My choices in the studio, the craft in the records, the sound choices. Vision's clear, man. Yeah, like I kind of yeah. know I'm ready for a That's real, dope, real dope. big role. How long do you think records going to take you to get to the next level? So let me land, mm. let me land, let me land. Rick Rubin toes up. Mm. When do you reckon you're gonna get to that stage? You just literally t-shirt, shorts, feet out. Oh, vest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, he's always in the vest and shorts. Oh, Rick Rubin sitting with his legs crossed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Full on vill- villager style. Like, back <laughs> yeah. home. I'd say another five years. I'd say. Well, gonna, what, the, long, the beard's going to be long. <laughs> nah, I'm not sure my hair might be long, though. <laughs> I'm going grey, innit? So it's like, oof, it's, it's a lot of maintenance. And my hair grows fast, so I'm having it trimmed twice a week. Just for men, bro. Twice yeah, a and, week? Yeah, my hair grows fast, you know. Uh, that's a lot. So you do like Michael Richards. Remember Michael <laughs> Richards? Like, Especially when I'm on twice. camera and I'm doing this album campaign, like, blood, I've had to trim. I've got my trim at my store tour in London, like, straight. So and you then, bring the barber with you? Yeah, man. Just don't go. Uh, yeah, this is, you know, it's an essential. Because even when, when Michael was talking about it, he was like, yeah, because he was like, yeah, I've got my barber, you know what I mean, twice a week. Didn't he say it's like two bills? Yeah, yeah, and it was yeah, like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. He's living mm-hmm. off him as a client, where yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, barber prices are mental. But yeah, sorry. I still go to my barber in Forest Gate, though, as well. Come on. He's still, I love that, He's still man. £10, but I love him, man. Still Tariq. £10. Yeah, Inflation ain't hit him, no? Obviously, I, I nice him. But oh, his Bre- trim's legit. Yeah, Brexit, Brexit ain't hit Old school, <laughs> old school, man. If, if you know about East London, there was, Brexit there was a is barber shop. Forest Gate. Man said, still £10. My trim's £15, £20 now. Yeah, roughly. So you used to get the one level taser. What are you paying all Inflation's that Inflation's up, boy. What are I going to say? So in terms of like um, Forest Gate, how was... Because I didn't know you were from Gate. Yeah. Um, or know you from East. Do you know, it's maybe because when I maybe was first introduced to Eminem. you... Because of Mist. Mist. Everyone yeah. says that. So in my mind, I was thinking you're from the Midlands no. or you're from somewhere, do you know what I'm saying? But today you're like, no, I'm from Gate. And I'm like, raw. Because double from Gate, like, nasty crew. There's so many people... Even rappers now, that are, that are even a young gen. Ooh, I've got a question. That are from Gate, do you know what I'm saying? So, um, what was, how, how was growing up in Gate? Is it, you lived Gate your whole life? My whole life, I grew up in Forest Gate, um, went to Forest Gate School, then went to Rokeby. Uh, What's then, Forest Gate School on? Lock for, uh, Forest Lane? Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. yeah, yeah I know that school. Um, grew up with D-Double, saw the whole Nasty Crew era. That was all, I was just like a sponge. Even from then, I knew UK music would be big. I just knew. I was like, well, yeah, that's what, that's, what was on, that's what I was going to be on question. What were you doing during the Grammy era? Making beats, but no one was vocaling them. <laughs> <laughs> they were dead. Well, they were, well, to me, they were hard, innit? <laughs> but but they weren't like, that nah. dead, but what it was, it, it weren't the thing, innit? Yeah. I was a bit more musical. You know, mm, yeah. Kind of like, and grime was bare harsh and that. Do you know the maddest thing is, yeah? You say you grew up with DWE, but I don't know if you might have noticed it, but the similarities with the way you use a lot talk yeah. Did, you, ain't, you, you ain't, what do you mean? Because D-Double is very, like, to the point, as in when he's talking and he's saying something, it's very, like... Direct. Precise. Precise, to the point, as in... And it's the same... We're both funny as well, but today I'm in a spiritual mood. <laughs> Trust me, Ark's easy in the man. We, we laugh so much, fam. Trust worry, me, I'll we'll do get, the most... We'll get the humour out of you, I don't do the, worry. I'll do the most stupidest stuff, but you know what it is. But remember, you're forgetting that people don't know what time it is. Right about now, yeah. it's nearly 2 a.m., so yeah. everyone is... It is 2 a.m. I'm in my spiritual bag, innit? You know, these times, man's laying in bed thinking, manifesting on the next one. Yeah. Oh, this is <laughs> a... You know what I'm saying? You try shrooms? Nah, I'll go nuts, man. My family, we got... Psychosis runs in my family. That's why I stopped smoking weed years ago. Okay. I started hearing voices in that fam. You're not meant to hear voices on the smoking. <laughs> Why am I hearing voices in that? Like seeing now. people. In the studio or normally? Just like normal. Oh. You might like I'd smoke a zoo microphone. and I'm... It might just be someone in the studio. Nah. I know, but I don't, ah, that paranoid feeling is not good, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't like that. They're that, always trying to get people on drugs. That, what is wrong with that? <laughs> but when you said it's on the spiritual thing, I just, just thought I'll slip that question in. You know that's, I mean? that's why I don't do I don't do weed, because I don't know where it's going to take me. Yo, it's a matter. Like, I, I can't. And now it's different. When we grew up here, I, I like cess. Okay. I don't really, I don't really like skunk and monk and all yeah. that. I think that's too much of a head. I don't even know what monk is. And all of them ones. Cali now. Cali's even worse. Back back in the day was either weed or skunk. That was it really. Yeah. Now it's it's death. Afghanistan, <laughs> strawberry, <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's it's Israeli, lime. There's all these. And I'm like, I'm like I'm the cake. Them, So what's the difference? And there is no difference. Bro. <laughs> but I'm on CBD though. 
Yeah, yeah, CBD's very relaxing. Because it, what, what they've managed to do is take away the mental high, like, and then it's just a bodily high. Okay. Yeah. So weed is not bad. I just can't smoke. So what does CBD say? So you smoke CBD? I mean, nah, what, what is I, it? I, I've got drops. Okay. Mine's 6,000. It's really strong. But what, what? it does... Yeah, 6,000. That's weed. what I'm saying. That's weed. Legally nah, hair. Dosage is like 1,000, 2,000. That's a high man. Legally <laughs> hair is like... I'm not sure. It might be like 25. 25? Like yeah, You've got 6,000? What's this say? It's we say 25. Man. It's 25 grams or 25,000? Uh, uh, milligrams. It's on yeah. the front. It's on the front. Is it on there? Uh, 20 to look 20 mg. I'm on 6,000 legally because this is my drink, obviously. Creative, I'm sick of Red Bull, so I made a natural drink. This is natural, um, like okay. Energizer. So, you've got to drink 300 cans to get the same dosage you're getting. What's it called? Yeah, it's called Creative, dope. Yeah, with a K. Um, so basically, I just was Red Bull. Like, if I had three, yeah, I won't sleep. I'm well, three is a mad number to have, though. I can't lie, yeah, I but I'm in the studio Bull, working for like 12 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm true. like, well, I'm just, and then, but it distorted my thoughts. And then I was like, yo, creative juice, man. Let me just do my thing. Yeah. Kind of. And is it working? Yeah, it works, man. This is like the first thousand I've done. But I've, yeah, we're in, we're in talks. With them, dude. Your, your, your brain must be different, uh, processed on a different level, blood. One man had them 6,000 drops. <laughs> no yeah, one the playlist is booming like that, brother. Yeah, man's so brain is in a different place, bro. <laughs> opening up clean. different it parts. Like channels your thoughts, innit? <laughs> bro. No, I'm, I'm a madman, innit? So I need something to tame me. You had 12,000 when you made that gigs one, though. 100%. percent <laughs> sick, sick intro still. Gigs is, gigs is just, you know what, he's the don, man. Just to go back to the album quickly before we talk about lifestyle and a few yeah. other stories. Uh-huh. The album um, track list. Yeah. Did you do that on purpose in terms of, I want gigs to start this off? Yeah, because that's I where this. I come from. I come okay. from road rap. Okay. That's where I broke into. So before Mist. Um, I was working with Crepton Conan, Clash Tastic, um, Young Meth, Fix Dot, and Buck even was rapping then. He's oh, yeah, I remember manager. Clash Tastic because when he came back from Jamaica, he, he, he bucked you, innit? Yeah. Was, was it here? Yeah, he yeah, bucked no, you somewhere. I was in tears in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Saw, like, where was it? Oh, bucked yeah, yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I remember. I remember. Yeah, so I'm saying, yeah, I love yeah. this game. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, remember, I love I remember this remember game. That, yeah. I'm not here just like it's it's saying a joke. Something. This yeah, is I remember my life's blood. Like, and obviously, I, um, that's why I said I've, I've been there before, like when we were talking about the retreat. Yeah. Because when I lost Cash, I was in depression. Do you know what I'm saying? But he's back and he's going to blow and he's going to do his Yeah, yeah Cash is good people. Good. I know he's, he's people that are yeah. marrying him lot. Yeah, man. Which is dope. Um, but yeah, so the track list, did it on purpose. Okay. Like, started it with rap, went into a bit of drill, then went into like that and this, and then went up that like, kind of like deep at the end with mm. like real voice notes and like Maverick Sabre and Getz on Essence where we talk about he's talking about me being in prison on that record and then Getz obviously he's been to prison before and then you've got the iconic British cinema actor Tamar Hussain you know the business yeah. football factory like so many films yeah yeah and then like him at the end just giving a bit of motivation you know what I'm saying so. No, I like it still. So, so what's the what's the craziest story? Is in like obviously back in the day when you were out and about going from uh-huh. what, what, what 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 is the craziest city for you in London? Mm-hmm. And then maybe what is the craziest city? Like what do you mean though? Like, like as in just just like a wild night? As in like yo, this this city is whether it's vibes. Miami, I love. Okay, okay. Um, Houston is my favorite. Yeah, I need to go there. I ain't been yet. I love Houston. I love the women there. Unbelievable. There's a place called Kiss there, yeah. um, which is like a dinner spot, but they party in there. Yo, I'm telling you now, uh, it is sick. <laughs> Yo, forget I'm UK. I'm so vexed. I went to Yo, Houston, I didn't bro, go to Houston, none of these Kiss, spots, and then I went to the strip club V Live. Uh, is that Yo. the one you went to, Dave? No. I didn't go to strip club in Houston. I went to strip club in ATL. You went JD, I went to Atlanta. Did you go Blue Flames? I went, I went years ago. I, went, was I was 23, so that's about Yeah, 10, I've been to Bear Strip years ago. Clubs. I love it. I feel like I can really Thank feel you. the music there. Thank you. Cause wait, 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 Taser, I wait, 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 pause, 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 nation. pause, pause, pause. Strip clubs where? Uh, in, in America. Where are you going to strip clubs? Oh, Here, bro. Like, what's the difference? <laughs> There's man, a big difference, no, 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 bro. I'm said, telling you. Man said, man like I said, count, bro. <laughs> you know I don't go there. <laughs> 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 all I'm saying, that you know what? We're, we're getting there still. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm, and this is what I'm saying. To I might open a strip club, you know. Discrimination. Nah, but like in a, in a proper, like a proper big one, like yeah. what here or in, in the UK, but ba- base it on that because we're missing out, bro. No, I see. See, I no, I did. I did a night called Drip, and they got a few strippers in there. It was a good night. It was a good yeah. night. But we're just not you used know, to it. Like people were standing around. Mm-hmm. Like it was a 
cabaret and it's like no nah, you're not supposed Bro, to do in, that in America the girlfriends people partners come there and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not as taboo as it is here and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the barmaids and that are like oh, known crazy. as a group they're known mm. as a group and they travel all around America crazy. to all the strip clubs and launch yeah it's a different culture yeah, it's, it's mental if you could bring it here 100% I love all that. I'm single. I'm, I'm good. You don't even see, man. Trust me. It's a vibe I story. love all that, man. Because in America, as you said, and I feel like the mentality over there is different. Like, bottle girls in America earn pee, bro. Yeah, the tip game's crazy. Bro, yeah, the tip game's crazy over there. And even just as a place, as you said, mm. guys go with their girls, girls go with their girls, um, man them go by themselves. It's, it's just nice. Like, the food there is nice. Like, yeah, he's smoking the club as well. Like, shisha, whatever oh, you yeah. want to do. Like, it's just in this environment, it's just cold whereas here I feel like the Still perception sh- of bottle girls is she ain't making no money so girl, girls might not want to do it because of the judgement yeah. strippers as well like girls don't want to be strippers because people might know who they are like whereas in America I'll oh, strip I'm only yeah, money yeah, yeah, and, all free condoms. and it's, it's too far gone that that mentality that you just mentioned yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah, even yeah. exist there yeah yeah and that's, that's, that's part of the culture. Hip, that's why I like America. Yeah, it's one hundred percent. Because I'm telling you, you man, like the places I've been here. When you go in there, we're talking about bottle girls. When you go into, I told you Leicester Square, where I usually go, bro. The girls they make money as well. The girl, the bottle girls there make money. You know what I mean? The strippers there yeah, make tape. money. Because even when I went there, it kind of caught me off guard. Because at the time, my my idea of what strip clubs were here, you know, when you think spearmint rhinos. So you're like, that's not. Kind of more like a gentleman's club. Yeah. But when I went in there, it was a totally different vibe. And mm. that's why I was like, we're so used to those things just being very seedy and very weird and very odd. When I was there, I was like, it's not the vibe you get. So that's why when I tell mm. people I enjoy going there, even if it's just to chill, to kick back. To, you know, I bumped into certain people in there because it's literally it's that place where, and, and I love the strip club over here. You know why? It's one of the few places people are not allowed to have their phones up. Over yeah, here. Yeah, people can't film you, you know, you're like, I can come in oh, here. In America, chill. they don't give a damn about it. Nah, this is popping off. Now, nah, over here, and that's why for me, I like yeah. not being filmed by people where you're out here chilling. I know, but I need to record this experience, bro, because these cheeks are <laughs> clapping really. Yo, bro. some scared me, man. Some girls are scary on that pole. Because <laughs> they're, they're hungry, because they're trying to get Bro, paid. I ain't lying to you. One, there was this, the, the club went all dark and that, and it just started strobing, and one real thick thing come out. I mean, <laughs> I just started horsepower, bro. Like, <laughs> 700 bro, horses. yo, I swear down, I asked, I asked my manager V as well, like, bro, it was a mad thing. And uh, the, the clap was louder than the music. Messed <laughs> <laughs> up the acoustics. Boom. I was like, rah, she's breaking, man. Do you know what the thing is? I haven't seen this thing. I'm excited for you, bro. I swear to you. Bro, in America, breaking, when you go to, you go to a strip club, yeah, this. Because do you know what isn't with strip clubs in America? One of the girls is your exact type. Oh, 100 percent Like it's like there might be there's, there might be 20, 30 girls in there that they're all nice, but there's one you see and you're like, you see you, yeah. Like, can I just say I'm oh, very man, proud yeah. because I remember when I was discussing this on yeah. the pod years ago and he hadn't experienced it and he was yeah. like, There's no way I'm going to America and spending my money on strippers. No way. I said, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. Look at him now. Changed man. <laughs> ones in it, ones, man. <laughs> man, <laughs> man He's letting it fly now. I don't remember that. Throw the ones. <laughs> the jigger juice, right? Where's that drink from again? What, Tropical Box? Tropical Box, yeah, man. Mm. I've got the apple and... Got what's my brother Saze, you get me? Apple and grape. Yeah. Oh, so it's, just, it's the same thing. So that, that Tropical Box yeah. is this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This juice is tasty, boy. Yeah, man. This is nutritious. It's good. I'm, I'm loving it because all the men them are doing their thing around me and I love yeah. that. Do you know what I'm saying? And we support that around here. I think it's supposed to be a more health conscious. That's what the music's done as well. See, when we was coming up, like, I don't know how old everyone is, but like, when I was younger, like... Wasn't that many opportunities, innit? Yeah, but you yeah, see, yeah. music, fashion, everyone yeah. can do mm. something now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have loved to have been young in this era. I would have been gone. Yeah, yeah. No, with the kids now, you're like, there's <laughs> yeah. so many things available. Because in other times, you know what I mean? There were, you know, and you're like, there were things you could have been doing, but you're like, the money just wasn't adding up. Nah. Think of music and man mm. killing it in music, but the ma- money just wasn't balancing out. So many clothing brands popping through, so many, just everything yeah, is beautiful, yeah. man. There's nothing yeah. to cry about right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Because the first, I'd say, clothing label I saw. Even in, the shotters are up. Yeah. <laughs> no levels, bro. <laughs> bro, the Cali's P. Bro, because you know, man could afford it now. Hey, is man it? are making crack money off weed, bro. bro that's true. Real talk. So, this is a part of the show we do like rapid fire questions. Cool. It's one minute. Um, so you can choose one word rapid fire, uh-huh. random rapid fire, yes or no rapid fire. Whatever you want, to be honest. Um, uh, do you know what? I'm just going to just do that and put my hand on Saturn. Should I set the timer? Rapid fire questions with two options. 
Okay. Uh, you got, got a minute. <laughs> Rapid fire questions. We have two options. All right, cool. Let me know when to go. Um, ready? <laughs> yeah. Stop. Work or play? Work. Love or friendship? Friendship. Money or happiness? Happiness. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Summer or winter? Summer. Morning or evening? Evening. Salty or sweet? Oh. Sweet. Do you watch shows one episode at a time or binge whole season? Don't watch none. Do you shower <laughs> at night or in the morning? Twice. <laughs> Would you rather fly or have a su oh, super strength? Super strength. Would you rather find your dream job or win the lottery? Dream job. Physi the lottery. Physical strength or mental health? Or mental strength? See, see, I'm thinking about the girls or the pee. <laughs> <laughs> mental. Um, are you more of an introvert or an extrovert? Stop. Introvert. Okay, cool. And then that's, that's the last one, a night out or a night in? Death or a night in. Cool. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, I mean, well, if, when, when the place looks like this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean, brother. I mean, <laughs> this is a night out inside. I like this. This is, this is a night out, bro. We've had some crazy house parties here, man. Couple still. I can imagine still because the mass. We do get, we do come out of that retreat vibe and get loose <laughs> as well. You get me? Yeah, man. Place so we have bare girls here. No, and it's funny. You know, it's just all about balance, and I think that is important. I think. I think sometimes people think when you're a well, you know, when you're a balanced person, when you like to kick back and relax, people think you don't have fun. Yeah, no, but 100%. It's, it's about balance. You like would have loved my album launch party. I did it at the Natural History Museum, bro. It's crazy. I think I, I threw, I threw the best launch party. By the way, I'll show you. I threw the best launch party in the game. Anyone else want to try it? Do you know let that me know. Day, I think Tay's had his event. I had an day. event on that day. Yeah, so let me lot. show you. Yeah, look. So, boom, now nah. look at the event. I threw at the Natural History Museum on the next one. Look at this. Alright, cool. Check this out. It's a quick thing. Bro. I went abs absolutely mental with it. At the natural. I still come from the Bev's Jeep. Had your mistress on Louis bed sheets. Made a trip car fuck it till it legs week. Open bar, free really? drinks, <laughs> drummers, everything, magicians, man, them, bear, bear gal. Oh, that's insane. so many gal. Not like them dusty launches where there's no. Gal. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shop fire. You know what I'm saying? So that's to come to this side. You know what I'm saying? Come lit, get lit on this side. Yeah, Natural History Museum. Oh, that's and, that's, and that's not a light venue either. No, it's, that was a hard one to get with the globe on, on the next team. That's dope. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, bro. man. I got the invite, but I remember I had work, man. Oh, it's all right. Next one, isn't it? Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Next one might yeah. be another mad location. Throw another one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Party Let's it relaunch it. <laughs> <Nah, laughs> you, you, you lot would have loved it. Nah, 100%. So man, be the first artist to do two launch parties for one. For Easy one love album. there. Look at him; he's folded up there. <laughs> Still he, he, he was Still lit. Sunday, you know. He was lit. Huh? Yeah, good vibes, right? Um, mm. All right, so just just to round up, um, mm. I don't know if you guys were adding other questions, but I just wanted to play a couple of tracks from the album in terms yeah. of our favorite tracks or your favorite track. No, however, you tell me um, which one. Bangles so, thing. I feel like just, I think you've got to start with, with the gigs one. Yeah. Because definitely that Come on, that's is the my intro brother, man. to the album. And I feel like people need to like hear that one. I know what my favourite so far is, so I'll say that after. Bangles team. It's my Spotify. Okay. So, so, oh, that's called Bang. Do you know what When you were saying Bangles thing, I thought you kept saying your album. I was thinking, but the album. I, I, I know, I know, but I thought. Look, 4.2 monthly listeners, million. It's crazy. That's dope. Fuck it, man. Yeah, that's a mad thing, man. <laughs> crazy. You know what's crazy, yeah? 
I, this is my one of my favorite moments of my career working with gigs. I can imagine, bro. Because for me, growing up, growing up, it's someone that you saw. Oh man, it's a personal one. Like, yeah. I'm so happy, fam. And he didn't. He gave me hollow. Yeah, yeah he gave you that original. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard that still. You know what I'm saying, oh, I love it. Hollow, man. Is it easy to work with? Giggs is a G, man. <laughs> Giggs is a G. I can imagine Giggs is particular about his yeah. things, you get me? Yeah. Shall I pause it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's calm. It's, yeah. it's, it's, so maybe like, after, if you put, yeah, yeah. So that, to that tune you're saying, that's your favourite because of? Just the, 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 the cultural value yeah, and yeah, the yeah. fact that when I started this game, I always wanted to work with Giggs. And it took me over 10 years. And, I, I feel and like I'm like a massive gigs fan. And it starts the album off correctly, like the like. Mm. It's the tone. It's the essence of like. As, I get what you mean, like UK rap. Mm. There's there's a few people that for me, in terms of UK rap, are staple within their genre. And mm. gigs is there. Probably. Blade is there. Tef is there. There's certain mm, yeah. people that like for UK rap, not like Graham. I'm talking about the original, the original pure rap. Mm. The album genre. takes a um, different direction though. So if you can play at your mum's house. Mum's house, yeah, that's a deep one still. Do you see, do you see this tune here? Cold because I feel like not many people have heard most that like, like this. this. Yeah, yeah. Man. I get like Playboy Carti kind of vibes from this tune still. Yeah, this song is deep still, man. We made this in my mum's house in a shed. I still got the footage of it, but he weren't too sure about the record. And as time progressed, I was like, no, I'm taking it because no one, the world's never gonna hear it. So, how long ago did you guys work on this? This record is about eight years old. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Wait, hold on. 2023, 2016. Seven years old. That's crazy. Yeah, I made this beat seven years ago. That is See, remember we were talking about, see, if yeah, something yeah, was being yeah. timeless old. as well. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Can That's you just pull crazy. it for a second so people can hear it? Like, because that this, because I think people need to hear it, because it makes sense now. This is like when we were experimenting with different sounds to find his right sound. Mm. This is cold still. I can't, I can't lie, I think this tune's cold. Mm. You can actually make an album like this or like more tracks like this. It's mad, it takes me back to like my mum's house. Yeah, yeah, back in the day, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Tune's cold, bro. Oh, is that why you said my mum's house? Cause it's yours. Oh, okay. This is when we, when he just released. Um, nobody. Okay. Uh, nobody. Nobody. Yeah, that time. Um, for me as well, the next track. Um, is uh, the one with um, Blade and Asko. Balling. Jim Asco. Jones inspired. Balling. Asko came in cold, bro. And the yeah. thing is, maybe because I haven't heard Asko for so long. Yeah, man. It was just like, yo. That's what I'm saying. Like, there, there's, there, see, us, man, are, the, are from this. This is what we love. Yeah. Some people wouldn't even rate this song. Yeah. Some people might not rate, uh, we might not rate some of the other songs yeah, and yeah, I understand yeah. that, but because my fan base and body of work is so diverse over the years, I just had to do this. Yeah. Yeah. If I could do just an album of me, the original bangles in rap, it would be the mad, maddest one. Mm. But it's not what's selling all the time. Yeah. I've got to do them ones as well, haven't you? Yeah, you've got to pay the bills, man. <laughs> I hear it. See that you can tell Asko's a 
bit older because he's got the American sweet ball. Like it's 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 that the swag. Yeah, yeah. It's got yeah. that. It's, it kind of feels like that a bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This guy ain't got one bad verse, bro. Pardon. <laughs> Consistency's mad. Mad. <laughs> you need to hear the laugh. I know the laugh will come at some point. Ha <laughs> ha. Damn. Yeah. Blade cold still. Yeah, man. No, it's a dope project, man. Yeah, man. I think I might have overdone it. You know, with this kind of stuff, like, you, you really need to take it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like, but I feel like, because it's an album that you will like certain tunes immediately, and then some will grow on you. Some will grow on you. Yeah. So I feel like the songs that you like, you're just gonna put on your playlist or you're gonna listen yeah. to, and then you might come back again at another time. Mm. But because mm. there's, remember, there's so many artists on this yeah, that, that you you might not like. For example, I don't know, you might not like as you said this tune, uh-huh. but you like the tune with uh, Most Stack, or you don't like that, but you like the tune with H and Morris. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like this it's dope. And also if if you don't, you might just be cleaning your house one day and leave it on. Yeah. And, yeah. Then and it, it might feel like, something. Oh, yeah, and you're like, alright, oh, I didn't know who's that? And then Yeah. But as I said to you, I think when the camera was off, mm-hmm. that the videos as well, I feel like would take some of these tunes to the next mm-hmm. level as well because Yeah, so like I've, visually. Yeah, because I watch a lot of American um uh, like marketing rollouts and they just release um, songs and then they'll put the videos out like two, three months later to boost the sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of gonna kind of gonna do that with a couple of records from here. If you could work with obviously there's so many people on that. If mm-hmm. there's um any artists that you haven't worked with yet, UK based and USA based, or maybe even worldwide because you're obviously mm-hmm. you're ticking worldwide boxes. Who would who would it be like if you had five artists off the top of your head that from the UK, US. Me and Skepta wherever. haven't worked. Okay. Yeah, I know him very well though. Um, we were on a plane to Ibiza and we had a deep conversation. Funny enough, he was on the he was on the plane with me and I was like, I was sitting there and I was like, no man, I'm just gonna go and chat to him because I'm a bit spiritual like that. Like this was meant to be, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's he going? We got a two hour flight. I'm <laughs> just go and chat to him, innit? <laughs> yeah. Do you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Really. And he gave me, gave me game. Skepta, Defo. Um, Nipsey Hustle, but he's passed away. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening to Nipsey since like 2009. You know what I'm saying? He was a real inspiration to me because he says stuff that like I just want to, I just love what he was about. Yeah, you get yeah. Me? yeah. Um, yeah. Who else? Uh, Amy Winehouse. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to work with. I was a big fan of her because her music was just real, real truth. Tr- I like honesty in yeah. music. I don't like, you can tell when someone's lying. Mm-hmm. And that's why. Um, Do you think that that's you can tell because of you're so deep in it? Cause no, I reckon you you lot will you lot will be like this guy's gassing man, or this singer's not really like. Let's say someone a singer tries to do a love song that someone else has wrote. They might not perform it. That the the, 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 the f- music's f- it's energy, bro. Yeah. I hear you, but Jaquie. Like they're not connecting. Jaquie's on LMA. His version was cold, bro. Yeah, because he, he was thought. feeling it. He was feeling it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was connected <laughs> with the tune. Fair Get enough. us to the tune. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I hear you. I hear, I hear you. I hear you still. But yeah, like Amy Winehouse, um, Tipsy, Skepta. Um, uh, who else? Um, producers. I'd love to work with Dr. Dre. Yeah, um, I met Michael Elizondo, who was his bass guitarist. I studied him while I was in jail. Actually, it's mad how the world manifests, man. Because when I got signed to Warner, I was the head of hip hop and rap there, and he was the head of hip hop and rap in America. And I'm talking Get Rich or Die Try in 2001. Every bass you hear is Michael Elizondo. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Because Dre sits there, and he's he had Scott Storch and Mike on bass, Scott Storch on keys, and then he he's on drums. So they were like a band. Oh, but Dre's yeah. the brand do you get it? Mm-hmm. I didn't so, even know that I, yeah. thought they were, I thought Scott Storch was like separate they're all separate nah Scott Storch bus because of Dre he, oh he serious played still Dre and forgot about Dre all the piano works on there oh and Mike played the bass and Get Rich or Dry Try and all the basses even the whole beat like, so even like Many Men Many Men was a different producer actually but he remade the bass um, in the club was Michael Elizondo that's mad. Eminem's Marshall Mathers EP, Michael Azonga. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you have, to be, you have to be in it to know. Because yeah. for me, I just thought Scott Storch was 
But like, yeah. As Dre is, I thought Scott Sorts was a separate producer like that. But he was. So, but I, I, I think he had that but, time as well. Yeah, when he was saying, but, with he, Dre. but he came from Dre, and that's. Mm. I think someone else would be Fela Kuti. Because yeah. I've spent a lot of time in Burnout, and he, I know he was very close in his family. And because I come from, like, my culture is very similar yeah. in terms of, like, cultural values. And I just lo- I would love to learn something about a, a legend from a culture like that and just kind of understand. Might take one or two things away, but I'd love to do that. You see, the, thing that the, the, um, the impression I get from you is, like, you're, you like people that are true to their art, as in, like, that are just in it. Because you believe yeah, that man, you can I'm get not, them. No, yeah, 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 but yeah. I might have been five years ago. You're in a different place now. Yeah, man. So alpacas now, bro. You can't tell me yeah. nothing, bro. <laughs> Come on. And and six fives and CBD. You get me? Yeah. You can't tell me nothing, brother. <laughs> but your man stroking the alpacas. It's not even the alpacas. It's the couch. <laughs> this alpaca is. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cold, though. No, hundred percent, man. It's it's important. It's good though that as Keith was saying that you've. You realised and you got to a point where like you kind of self-healed where you're like, because mm. a lot of people nowadays, is, I'm not saying it's wrong or right, that they get into a space and they can't get out of it. Whereas, and they maybe wait for someone else to help them with it or yeah. whereas you said to yourself, nah, 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 dust yourself off bro, like you've got to go again, like this is what I need to do and you've mm. done it. Yeah, I'm, 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 that's something to be real proud of because yeah, a lot of people fall off, man, when yeah. they're when they're stuck in these kind of things and it's not their fault, so, you know what I'm saying? And it just adds to your story as well. Yeah, exactly. it's crazy. A book coming? You gonna, you think you're gonna write a book? Most probably, I've been working on my documentary. Oh, dope. So I've, like, it all starts in Forest Gate. A pair of my friends have been interviewed, tells the story to when I went to prison. Um, and then how I came out changed my life. How long were you in for? Um, I got six years and I'm free. Okay. I was 17, I come out about 21. So I missed that whole uni era. Um. Did you? Would you say? Who knows? <laughs> you might know, be in the funky scene, boy. Yeah, it's true, you know. Yeah. Everything in God's timing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for real. You know what I'm saying? Did, Everything did, in God's did, timing. Would you have said that um, you learned anything in in prison when you were there? Loads. I met most of the rappers from South, and that's what made me get into rap music. Oh man! So I want to big up South London because. Yeah, a lot of you man were in jail. You get me easy. I swear down, bear man in jail from South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear. South, but South is massive though, isn't it? Yeah. Like you've got South West and South East. Do you know what I'm saying? But, so. Yeah, that, that's one thing. But also I found myself. Because when you imagine, and you, can, you lot actually can relate to this as well. Now, if you haven't been to Penn, I don't know if you lot have, but COVID taught you that. Yeah. Self-isolation makes you think. Yeah. Or like you become your own best friend, mm. like, and then you like discover things about you, and then you analyze everything and everyone in your life. I don't know if that was for you lot, but COVID was like pen, fam. Don't yeah, get yeah, it yeah. twisted. Do you know what it was, yeah, but I wasn't it was institutionalized, no, bro. Did you read, did I didn't read? find it that bad because, because you were out there fraternizing. Oh my god, Master I was you, out there too, though. Master, you were out there breaking yeah. the thank rules, you, bro. Thank I you, was thank out. you, Master Boris. Everyone was. Sorry, bro. I'm not backing him up, though. <laughs> <laughs> The way you are, it's bro. funny because Taze was looking at me to deny it until Bangles, you know, it was like, no, yeah, no, it's not, no, it's not you were looking, looking at him it. like you were about to deny it. No, I weren't going to deny, deny it. it. I was just saying that, you know, like some people, they have a routine. Yeah. Like for them, nine to five is how they get out of their house. So when it's lockdown hit. A lot hit, of people cracked, bro. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. with us, we're, we're, that's not our routine. Yeah, but you're forgetting lockdown was different for different people. So for example, as Bangles is saying, in terms of jail, you, you get arrested, yeah, you might be on remand, whatever. But then, in your mind, you're you're aware of what's happening, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas lockdown was like, we weren't aware. We heard something was coming. I think it know. was. I think it's a bit worse. Was like, yeah. I, think I thought know. everyone was gonna die, fam. Bro, it's IPP because like you don't know what's going on. You don't know when you're coming out. But also remember, and that sounds. This might this might sound weird, but you go to jail and you you might have a, a, a roommate or whatever, whatever. But. And that sounds weird, but some people living with your spouse here is worse, bro. <laughs> because so, uh, because some people remember they, they had that moment where like I go I go work, you go work, so we have our time apart. Or whereas bare relationships broke down. Yeah, yeah, broke down. But some some got stronger. Well, I mean, what percentage, bro? Small uh, percentage, uh, especially in the Asian community, man. Them up. Be beating their misses. Dude, you look at the statistics. Did you not know that domestic violence was massive. Nah, bro. I didn't know. Well, remember, in terms of our community, yeah. remember that's what I'm saying. In terms, in terms of life in general, you tend to be only privy 
to your communities in yeah, terms of the black yeah. community we're just aware of what's going yeah, on because in terms of Asian communities we just see it as you, you lot tend to marry into that in, no not, not marry but marry yeah. maybe quicker or you, yeah the you family in, thing's quick you stay in your house until Asian, you get Asian people are very segregated people Okay. But I think they're more open, slowly, but they're the worst. When you say, segregate, time, though. When you say segregate, what do you mean like in terms of... own high roads, own thing, own community, kind of like okay. very privately. But obviously we're all commercialised, but I say like we're very private. In your community, how does marriage work? Because so like, I know there's some... I used to live in Poplar, and, yeah. and I knew um, my next door neighbour, when they got married... They, the, the girl leaves they, the house. No, the, the the wife moved into to the his house, his yeah, house works, yeah. and lived with his family. Yeah, that's how. It is. This is all old school, man. It's all outdated. It's all dated, bro. Oh, so, so it's not something that. No, it still happens today. Okay, okay. But a lot of majority of the couples are just getting their own houses now. Okay. Because they kind of moved out of that mm. uh, first generation thinking. It's very back home thinking. But as you can see, I'm single and I'm not married, so it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of it kind of makes sense though, because if you, if you haven't got the money, then come and live here. But it's weird, but I find it funny that, like, it, it, why do you choose to go to the... No, it comes from a tradition first. where the, 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 if, the, if the household has a daughter, it's like they're meant to go and help the other, the man's parents and live there and be the housewife. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. And that's kind of like, women are kind of like... No. It's against it. Yeah, like, and, and if they're working, damn right. Then, right damn right, what do you think this is? I know, I know house skill. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? This ain't like, everyone has a choice of how they want to live their life, and whether you're male, female, or whatever. And if you've got, like, a... If you've got cool in-laws, you're fine. But if you haven't, it's rough, bro. You just got to accept it. Asian houses are strict, you know, blood. Certain I can imagine. Houses are very, I've seen some. Yeah, it's very strict. Yeah, you said your dad was throwing bags of rice at you. Say, you know what I mean? You like, was strict over there. Yeah, well, it's not, it wasn't strict. Though. That's no, just... but I, some, some Nigerian houses are like that. Yeah, yeah strict some, Yo, I'm telling you. <laughs> but but as, as I said, but as you said, it's... Well, African. It's, it's, like. No, no, no. It's true what you said, but I think that's the the kind of older gen. It's cha- like with it's our, changing with our, as time. With our like grandma, like, like remember, like, like in the black community, like the grandmas, like, like that, very strict. Mm. Yeah. And granddads as well. Yeah, like and then my mom's my mom's mad relaxed, and obviously yeah. now it's gonna mean that like, we're relaxed. Our generation. My granny used to slap his um hmm? his um son anytime he slaps his back. Stand up straight. Like me. Like, he was, bow! <laughs> but if you see my uncle now, he walks like that, brother. Because he's been slapped so many times. When, when you see him, bro, the back is straight. straight. I'm like, bro, that, but that's coming from... Beat, no, they, no, no. Mm. That's a the relax. beatings made me a bit more on point. No? No, no, it's straight. What's bro, the worst beating like, you've received? Different gen, isn't it? Bro, I've had all sorts of cricket bats. I had a snooker key. Snooker cues, yeah, broomsticks. Yeah. Belt. But were you bad? Were you bad when you were younger though? Because obviously yeah, you, went, you said like, you went jail. So yeah, I was like like stupid things, mm. stupid ones. Was like, it what, unruly stuff like not coming back home on time, or was it just that getting one, in trouble, stealing, or like um, just stupid things, breaking things? Man, my dad used to lock me in the cellar, bro. <laughs> what? Yo, I'm telling you guys. I said, yeah, I can put Took me to the park in Forest Gate, beat me up with a broom, bro. In the park? Yeah, he's the worst. Do you know, do you know, do you know what? Mum's at home, okay, let's go out. Do you know why that's sick, yeah? Because it's, um, he didn't even try and do it. You know, some people do it in, in private. <laughs> so, no, I'm, doing, I'm doing this one in the open. <laughs> come, 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 follow me. On the field, you know? I told the alpaca to roll as well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Before we wrap up, yeah, I was going to say, which, is, which one touched you the most in regards to the awards that you've won? Or, if, or even any award that's maybe not here? The one that's not here. No, I'm just saying. No, any, no, any. Which is the which one hit you the most at the time that what you was won my it? My first one, and maybe your favorite plaque as well. Uh, my first one is best producer 2017 GRM awards. I didn't even bro, you know, I didn't. Um, I was that uh, nervous. I left. Oh, I swear. So my manager had to pick up the award. Serious oh, anxiety hit you like that. My manager had to pick up the award. Let me show you. I'm the worst. Did you suffer from Did you suffer from anxiety then? You know what it is, bro. I just I'm not good with these things, fam. Um, you're good at your job, but you're not good at the going to certain events or just being around certain. I had it somewhere, but yeah, here it is. Look, it's only twenty seconds long. I thought we we were at that one day, isn't it? Was it Camden? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Taking this on his, um, yeah, for him because.
because he's, I don't know where he is. If anyone sees him, please let us know. Thank you. To the team. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just, I'm like, did I win? No. <laughs> no, I was at home. <laughs> then I've come <laughs> back. Leave me my wall, man. So that one, because that's kind of like my first yeah, one. But then before that, I've won a few as well. I mean, I've, I've won a lot of awards. I think they come with the, f the game. Mm. But it's, it's nice to have. It's, it's good for the portfolio. What about your plaques? Is there a favourite plaque you have? Or your first one? Or Favourite plaque. My first one was... There's a lot of first ones, actually. But for me, bad. Because that was my first single. It was a tune. And everyone told me it was dead. And now it's on the way to being double platinum. See, right. sometimes you ain't got to listen to people. So saying, you can't listen to people. That song true. was actually originally for Mo Stack and Burner Boy. Mm. Bad. As a tune, though. Mm. Bad. Yeah, yeah. like commercial, innit? Like, mm. like, yeah, so I'd say bad. There's notes is on that track, innit? Yeah. Mr. Mm. Easy. See, you always connecting people. Mm. No one knew Mr. Easy, like, he was coming through. Like, he just done a couple songs. Yeah, look at him now. Mr. Easy's way. a G. He sold these things the other day, innit? Yeah, he's a bad man, man. So, yeah. Yeah, he's a G. Uh, that's what I'm saying it's full circle and it goes back it's good to end on this it goes back to relationships being built because you did say it's very important 100% and all these people you're spoken about mm -hmm. yeah. is it stopped? oh yeah, yeah. but um, but now we appreciate um, you coming to the pod and let's uh, let no, everyone know I appreciate know. you lot man yeah man I, I've, 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 you know I've never done a podcast anymore. and then uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have. think I'm going to do another one after yeah. done though no. thanks for blessing us with, uh, with yeah, this man. That's true, man. Love, man. thank yeah, you for man. welcoming us in your home as well no, you know I'm what I mean beautiful home I love, I love. Thank you with the alpacas it would be good to see the alpacas but it's a bit late now they might be sleeping yeah no no but as I said man real talk the playlist check it out Give it a listen, run it up. Um, no, I let's, let's, that. let's chart. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, we're going, we're going top ten. Still top five. bang. We need to chart, man. But um, yeah, now definitely listening to it and being a lover of UK music and all the things UK, it definitely ticks boxes for something most for people. Everyone. For something Even like, if yeah. it's one song. Yeah, yeah. So. And I think it's also great for people to kind of get to... Sometimes, you know, there's the human element of someone, you know, when you have a conversation, because most people probably see you as, you know, still bangles, you know what I mean, superstar producer, but there is the human aspect of yeah, it. There yeah, is the person 100%. that, like I said, the person that goes through shit, the person that, like I said, you're Demons, dealing with, yeah, yeah you're dealing with, you know, yeah. kind of alcoholism and stuff like that. Those are things people don't see, so people just see the plaques, people just see, you know what I mean, the awards, people don't see that, yo, when this was going on, I was going through X, Y, Z, I had to deal with this, this and this, and I had to kind oh, of, too. you know, you have to bring yourself up out of that. So I think, you know, even though you don't do many podcasts, you, you don't... I've never done any, this, the first one yeah. ever, and, I think and I'm never going to... It's kind really of dope. <laughs> <laughs> Not because it's, I don't like them, I'm kind of like... Private. Yeah. I just think it's dope to be on one and let them have the information yeah. Yeah. and let, let that go to you lot. Isn't yeah. it? Why am I going to go and try and do too Fair many enough, like, yeah. when I've... And I kind of love championing that. Like, yeah. oh, you no, man, I think only that's got really that dope. one. Yeah. Kind of ever. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. That's still like me collaborating on a track. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying? It's yeah. like, yeah. it's a one-off, isn't it? Like, kind of like... And, we, and we, to be fair, as I said, we, we appreciate it anyway. In terms no, of I, I, look, I should have come to the studio, as you guys know, so I apologise, but... No, it's all good, man. No, I think sometimes it's good to come out. But I'm yeah. not going to lie to you. You've, you've kind of, with this... Because remember, we, we had to do it on the spot in terms of work it out. But now we've worked it out. Mm -hmm. I believe that like this is something that like will be sick because some guests can't come to the pod. It's either too far away or... It makes it's sense. Just in their house, they're more comfortable. Mm. So Remember, it's not the environment. People love you lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, love, they don't care. You could mm. be anywhere, Giza. Yeah, yeah. And also, we're going to come back and do um, a house tour if we can. Hundred percent, man. You can talk us through why things are designed a particular way. Uh -huh. The studio. Yeah, man. Might even have to like do a what do you call it? A little task at the end where man's got to make we'll a verse. Chase the alpacas or something. No, oh, make, oh. Every, each, make a track in thirty minutes. Each, yeah, each man has a verse or something. You get Let's me? do it. <laughs> I'm active. Keep the rapper. I can't <laughs> lie, you know. I think I'm, I'm think I'm gonna win that one still. You get a record deal straight away. Am I gonna come with that gigs hollow man vibe, bro? You're come done man. out here, bro. What? what Trust me. You think, you know, I'm gonna start writing from now, bro. <laughs> You're gonna toast, bro. What are you mad? All right. Cool.